Hi everybody, Jacob Reed here from ReviewEcon.com. Today we're going to be talking about monetary policy, both the old system of scarce or limited reserves and the new system of ample reserves. You need to know both of them on your AP macroeconomics exam. If after watching this video, you still need a little more help, head over to ReviewEcon.com and pick up the total review booklet. It has everything you need to know to ace your microeconomics or macroeconomics AP exams. Now let's get into the content. First, we're gonna talk about monetary policy and what it's for. Central banks throughout the United States use monetary policy to achieve three goals. Those are the macroeconomic goals of stable prices, full employment, and economic growth. Monetary policy is used to change interest rates, which change gross investment. And with that change in gross investment, aggregate demand is going to shift in the ASAD model, which changes the price level and real output. And this is true both for scarce reserves and ample reserves. Central banks in both systems target interest rates to make these changes within the economy. Now let's talk about the difference between scarce reserves and ample reserves. Remember that reserves are the funds that banks have available. They are broken down into two categories. Required reserves, those are the funds that they cannot loan out. It's determined by the reserve requirements set by the central bank. And excess reserves, that's the money that can be loaned out. It's what's left of the reserves after the excess reserves have been subtracted out. Remember that reserves are part of the monetary base, or M0. But reserves are not money. The other component, currency, is money, as currency is part of the M1 money supply. Now, since the 2008 Great Recession, reserves within banks have dramatically increased. Here we can see how much reserves have changed. So in the middle of the Great Recession in 2008, we had $46 billion in bank reserves within the United States banks. But today, we have over $3.2 trillion worth of reserves in banks. So essentially, we went from a scarce reserve system to an ample reserve system. Now on your macroeconomics exam, you're gonna to need to know both models. The scarce reserves or limited reserve system primarily uses the money market graph to understand how the Federal Reserve changes interest rates. But for the ample reserve system, we have a different graph. This is the reserves market graph, and we're gonna go through it more in this video. So first we're going to talk about everything you need to know about scarce reserves. And while the United States Federal Reserve uses ample reserves, there are countries in the world still that use scarce reserves. So under a scarce reserve system, central banks are going to target their policy rate through changes in the money supply. The policy rate is the interest rate that banks charge each other. In the United States, the policy rate is called the federal funds rate. Increases in the money supply are going to decrease the nominal interest rate in the money market, and decreases in the money supply are going to increase that nominal interest rate. So under a scarce reserve system, there are three monetary policy tools. The first one is called the discount rate. The discount rate is the interest rate that the central bank charges banks for overnight loans. Increasing the discount rate is going to decrease the money supply, and decreasing the discount rate is going to increase the money supply. And that's because the discount rate is the penalty for not having enough required reserves. So a higher discount rate is going to decrease the amount of loans that banks make. And a lower discount rate is going to increase the number of loans banks make. And new loans cause changes in the money supply. Next, we have the reserve requirement. The reserve requirement is the percentage of checkable deposits or demand deposits that banks cannot loan out. If they increase the reserve requirement, banks are going to loan out less, that decreases the money supply. And if they decrease the reserve requirement, that's going to increase the money supply in the money market. Third, we have open market operations. Open market operations is just two things, buying government bonds or securities or selling government bonds or securities. If the central bank sells securities, it's going to make the money supply smaller. And if they buy securities, it's going to make the money supply bigger. So those are the three tools that can be used to target interest rates within the money market. If the central bank is looking to fight inflation, they will use contractionary monetary policy. That includes raising the discount rate, raising the reserve requirement, or having an open market sale of government bonds. Any of those policy actions will decrease the money supply and increase the nominal interest rate. That higher interest rate means less gross investment. And we'll connect that to the ASAD model in a little bit. If on the other hand, the central bank is looking to fight unemployment, it is going to use expansionary monetary policy to increase the money supply. That will involve lowering the discount rate, lowering the reserve requirement, or making an open market purchase of government bonds. 
Any of those actions are going to increase the money supply, driving down the nominal interest rate in the money market. That lower interest is going to lead to higher investment, and with that, we will see an increase in the aggregate demand in the ASAD model. Now we're going to talk about the new ample reserve system that is used in the United States and other countries with ample reserves. Here's what the graph looks like. On the y-axis, we have the policy rate, and on the x-axis, we have the quantity of reserves. Now banks are going to demand reserves when they wish to borrow funds from the central bank or other banks. The demand curve is flat at the top and we call that the upper bound. The upper bound is at the discount rate. And it's flat at the discount rate because banks will not borrow at any rate above the discount rate because that's the interest rate that they can borrow directly from the Federal Reserve. Next, we have a downward sloping portion, and that is the demand curve that we've typically seen within this class. For this portion of the demand for reserves, at higher policy rates, banks will demand less reserves, and at lower policy rates, banks will demand more reserves. Finally, we have another portion of the demand curve that is horizontal. This is the lower bound of the demand for reserves, and it is flat at the interest on reserves rate. That is the interest rate that the Federal Reserve and other central banks with ample reserves pay banks on their reserves. So the interest on reserves lifts and flattens the lower portion of that demand curve through a process called arbitrage. Now this video isn't going to get into arbitrage because you don't need to know it on the AP macroeconomics exam, but I suggest that video if you'd like to take a look and see how it works. Next, we're going to talk about the supply of reserves. The supply of reserves is controlled by the central bank. That's the Federal Reserve within the United States. And it won't be impacted by the policy rate, which means that it is vertical or perfectly inelastic. Open market purchases of government bonds will shift that supply curve to the right. And open market sales of government bonds will shift it to the left. Now, the policy rate or the federal funds rate is found at the intersection between the demand curve and the supply. And again, that is called the federal funds rate within the United States. It's the interest rate that banks charge each other for overnight loans. And that interest rate impacts interest rates throughout the economy. Now you can see the old model of scarce reserves on this graph. And we see that scarce reserve system on the downward sloping portion of the demand curve here. When the supply intersects the demand curve at the downward sloping portion, small changes in the supply of reserves will impact the policy rate. And so it's in that downward sloping portion that we can see open market operations have an impact on the interest rate. But when we are in an ample reserve system where the supply curve intersects the demand curve at the lower bound, that's where changes in the supply of reserves will have no impact on the intersection there at the policy rate. So with ample reserves, open market operations will not have an impact on the policy rate. But open market operations will still be used to increase the supply of reserves, keeping the intersection between the demand curve and the supply curve along the lower bound. That maintains an ample reserves system. The Federal Reserve can change the discount rate still, and that is going to move the upper bound. A decrease in that discount rate is going to shift that upper bound downward. But you'll see a change in the discount rate didn't actually change the policy rate. Changes of the interest rate on reserves will actually impact the policy rate. And that's because changes in the interest on reserves will shift the lower bound. Here we see an increase in the interest on reserves shifting that demand lower bound upward and that increases the policy rate. So here are our monetary policy tools for a central bank with an ample reserves system. The first one is open market operations and that is used to maintain ample reserves. It increases the supply of reserves to keep us in that lower bound of the demand curve. And then we have the administered rates. The two you need to know for the AP microeconomics exam is the discount rate. That discount rate does not actually change the policy rate. It only moves the upper bound up or down and the interest on reserves, which is the interest rate that the Federal Reserve or central bank pays banks on their reserves. And it is that interest on reserves rate that is the primary policy tool used by the Federal Reserve and other central banks banks with an ample reserve system. So whether we have a scarce or limited reserve system or an ample reserve system, central banks are targeting their policy rate, which impacts interest rates throughout the economy. Here we have an ASAD model showing an economy with a recessionary gap. Here a central bank is going to use expansionary monetary policy to fight unemployment. That will lower the nominal interest rate within the economy and that will increase gross investment and other interest rate sensitive spending. That increase in gross investment and other interest rate sensitive spending is going to shift that aggregate demand curve to the right, restoring long run equilibrium if they get it just right. Which increases the price level, but it also increases real output, decreasing unemployment. <laughs> 
Let's look at contractionary monetary policy on the other hand. Here we have a ASAD model showing an economy with an inflationary gap. Here we're going to fight inflation with monetary policy. That will lead to higher interest rates and the increase in the interest rate will lead to decreases in gross investment and other interest rate sensitive spending. And that is going to decrease the aggregate demand curve, shifting it to the left. That will cause a decrease in real output, which increases unemployment, but we're going to have a lower price level and that will ease inflationary pressures. A little side note to help you out on your exams, do not assume that the question is going to call for the appropriate policy action. There's always a chance that a question will ask you for a policy action that will actually make economic problems worse. And there you have it. That is everything you need to know about the ample reserves and scarce reserve systems of monetary policy. If you still need a little more help, head over to reviewecon.com where there's lots of games and activities to help you practice the skills necessary for your AP macroeconomics exam, and then purchase the total review booklet. It has everything you need to know to ace those exams. That's it for now. I'll see y'all next time.